Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullah. We're going to start our lecture with uh, some verses from the Holy Quran. Uh, then inshallah we will have the lecture uh, by Sayyid Muhammad Baqir al-Qazwini titled Harmony Among Us, the Followers of Allah's Path. If you have any questions, um, you can ask after the lecture or you can ask uh, in the app or write it down and then pass it to us. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem. Innama al-mu'minuna ikhwatun fa'aslihu bayna akhawaykum wa attaqu allaha la'allakum turhamun. يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا يسخر لا يسخر قوم من قوم عسى أن يكونوا خيرا منهم ولا نساء من نساء عسى أن يكون خيرا منهم ولا تلمزوا أنفسكم ولا تنابزوا بالألقاب بئس الاسم الفسوق بعد الإيمان ومن لم يتوف أولئك هم الظالمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اجتنبوا كثيرا من الظن إن بعض الظن أثم ولا تجسسوا ولا يغتب بعضكم بعضا أيحب أحدكم أن يأكل لحم أخيه ميتا فكرهتموه واتقوا الله إن الله تواب رحيم يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم إن الله عليم خبير صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد In this lecture, inshallah, um, Sayyid will walk us through some concepts that help us uh, appreciate the diversity of uh, the creations of Allah and we will focus on similarities rather than differences um, and how to, and also we'll talk about how to agree to, to disagree with our fellow Muslims, uh, Sunnis, Shi'i, uh, our uh, fellow believers and non-believers. And now we start with uh, Samah al-Sayyid. Ahsantum, thank you. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع نفوسنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأراضين إمامنا وسيدنا الحجة بن الحسن المهدي أرواح العالمين له الفدا Respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran, in Surah Al Rum, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, wa min ayatihi khalqu al samawati wal ard, wa ikhtilafu al sinatikum wa alwanikum, inna fi dhalika la ayatin lil alameen. And amongst the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creation of the universe, the heavens and the earth, and the diversity of your languages and colors. These are signs for those who know. Sadaqallahu al-Aliyu al-Azim. Illuminate your hearts and minds with a very loud salawat. So they say that one day, this person was trying to cross over a bridge when he tripped and he fell and he was hanging on the bridge. So he yelled for someone to save him. Help! I'm about to drown. And there were a lot of dangerous fish in the water and he didn't really know how to swim. So someone passes by, he sees this poor guy crying for help. He tells him, what do you want? He says, don't you see that I'm about to fall and drown? Come and save me. He says, okay, I'll come and save you. But before I save you, I have a question. Where are you from? He tells him, do you really have to ask this question now? He's like, yes, please tell me. Otherwise, I won't save you. He tells him, I'm from Lebanon. 
So the guy tells him, perfect, I'm from Lebanon too. Yalla, let me save you. Before saving him, he tells him, but wait a minute, you didn't tell me, are you Sunni or Shia? He said, no, I'm Shia. He's like, perfect, I'm Shia too. Okay, save me now. He's like, no, no, I still have some more questions. Which marja' do you follow? Tell me. <laughs> so the poor guy, he told him, look, honestly, I, I follow Grand Ayatollah Google. He's my marja'. He's like, perfect. I used to follow Ayatollah WhatsApp, but I recently switched to Ayatollah Google. So we're on the same page. He's like, would you help me now? He's like, I still have a few more questions. What's your favorite food? <laughs> the guy said, my favorite food is Mluchiyya. So he told him, perfect. I'm glad you said that. And you didn't say fraki. You said the mulukhiyah because I hate fraki. I love the mulukhiyah. He's like, okay, can you, can you save me now? He's like, one last question. Which village are you from? Tibnin or Bint Jbel? <laughs> the guy said, no, I'm from Tibnin. He says, sorry. At that point, I can't help you. And he walked away. Now, many of you are laughing. But this scenario describes us every single day, in every community. So many times, we focus on the differences and we try to make an issue out of those differences and we forget all the similarities that we have in common. This describes many of our communities, my dear brothers and sisters. Now, as we address this very important topic, how can we create harmony amongst the followers of the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can we bring that, our, that harmony to our society? We have to change our mindset. We have to change our mentality. And we have to remind ourselves that the creator who created me, the Lord who decided, me to, who decided to put me on this earth through his wisdom, he has a system that's based on diversity, that is based on differences. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in Surah Al-Rum, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ Allah talks about his grand signs, the grand signs of the universe, is the creation of this universe. Just look at the complexity of this universe. Look at the diversity of life on earth. Look at the different elements and minerals that we have. That's why life is so rich. Allah has put so many colors, so much diversity in this life. That's a grand sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Next to all of that, what does Allah state? وَاخْتِلَافُ أَلْسِنَتِكُمْ وَأَلْوَانِكُمْ the differences of your languages, your mentalities, your mode of communication, and even your colors, your races. Allah says, I have made you different. Most of us fail to understand this point, that this is the system of my creator. If I love Allah sincerely and genuinely, I will love the way he made this creation. And I will cherish it, and I will celebrate it, and I will embrace it. This is a beautiful sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shares with us in the Holy Quran. Now we do the exact opposite. We focus on the differences and consider them as obstacles. Allah reminds us in the Holy Quran in another verse which the brother recited from Surah Al-Hujurat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, you know why I made you different into different nations, into different tribes? Not so you can get stuck on those differences. Not so that you can see them as obstacles. But for you to come to know one another. That is the main objective of all this diversity. Get to know one another. See a different perspective. Look at different cultures, different backgrounds. That is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Simply absorbing these beautiful Quranic teachings will bring us a lot of harmony. If we want harmony in this world, we have to change our perception, our understanding of the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And instead of seeing these differences as obstacles, in fact, 
We see them as beautiful elements in the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We embrace that diversity and we cherish it. Now at a practical level, my dear brothers and sisters, how can we create that harmony? What can I do to shift my perception, my worldview, in order to bring more harmony in our lives and in our societies? I will share with you some practical steps. These steps are extremely helpful, beneficial, for us to arrive at that harmony. Number one, when you look at other people, we have different lens by which we look at others. Even if you're not wearing glasses, you're wearing many. You're simply not aware of it. We usually define other people through the lens by which we look at them. Sometimes I look at people and I see that this person is a doctor. I see a doctor. That's what defines this person. I see this person as being white or black. Muslim or non-Muslim, from my village or from another village. We have all these lens from which we look at other people. And we naturally do that. It's so natural, it has become part of our lives. What does the religion of Islam teach us at this very building block? That lens by which you look at other people. How did the greatest creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. How did he look at other people? We know that the Prophet brought Islam, he brought deen, he brought religion, definitely. That was his mission, to convey the message of God. But how did he see other people in society? This beautiful incident shows us the lens by which the greatest creation of God would look at people. One day the Prophet ﷺ is sitting amongst his companions. A casket passes by. Janazah, there was a funeral. People walking in that funeral. As a sign of respect, the Prophet ﷺ stood up when that janazah passed by. He stood up to show his respect for this deceased. The companions objected to him. They told him, Ya Rasulullah, why did you stand up? That dead person is not a Muslim, he's a Jewish man. This is the body of a Jewish person. Why did you stand up to show your respect? The Prophet answers in two words. But these two words, my dear brothers and sisters, contain with them an ocean of ma'rifah and knowledge. Beautiful lesson from the Prophet. Two words in Arabic. The Prophet responded to them and he said, Alayset nafsan. Isn't it a soul? Isn't he a human being? I respected him because he's a human being. See the Prophet, before he even sees where you're from, what your, you know, beliefs are, the Prophet sees you as a human being. Allah, whom I claim to love and worship, created you. You're the work of my creator. At least I'll show this much respect. So the Prophet ﷺ gives us a very beautiful lesson. How do you view others? From which lens? The lens of humanity. Now honestly, brothers and sisters, do you think we're really doing that today? How often do we do that today? In our communities, in our families. Sometimes you see the husband and the wife, they dehumanize each other. They're no longer human. The way they talk about each other, let alone other people. So this is the first step to bring that harmony into our societies, to the world. Look at others as human beings created by the Lord that you love, the Lord that you worship. This allows you to even treat people differently. This brings equality to our societies. That's one very practical step when it comes to bringing harmony. The second step, my dear brothers and sisters, is a very important one. Many times we have problems, we have issues, is because we don't talk to one another. There's no dialogue, there's no communication. People who are different than me, people who are on different paths, I rarely make the effort 
to see where they're coming from. For me, just to have a brotherly conversation, a human conversation with them. We refuse to have dialogue with people who are different. And that is a fundamental problem that blocks harmony around the world. Amongst the different paths, the different religions. See what the Quran teaches us here, my dear brothers and sisters. Allah in the Quran, He teaches us that He had dialogue with two groups. The first one is a good group, but they objected to Him. Allah gave them the chance to explain themselves. He had dialogue with them, the angels. When Allah told them, informed them, I am going to choose a representative, Khalifa on earth. What did the angels say? They objected. They said, oh Allah, are you going to create another creation who's going to kill and spill blood and cause corruption? Because the angels had seen human-like figures before Adam salam. My estimate based on the different hadiths is that Prophet Adam probably lived somewhere between 8,000 to 15,000 years ago. Yes, very recent in human history. The angels had seen human-like figures. You know, they weren't civilized. They'd kill each other. So they objected to their Lord. Why would you create another creation who just looks like that and they're going to do the same? What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala respond? Allah could have told them, who do you think you are? I'm the Lord. How dare you come with this objection? Allah has dialogue with them even though they're objecting. He simply told them, I know that which you don't know. I have a plan and you'll see my plan. That's the first group Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had dialogue with. The second group, not the pure angels, his own enemy, the enemy of God. When Allah commands the angels and Iblis was mingling amongst the angels, he commanded them to prostrate to Adam. They all did except Iblis, he refused. He challenged God. Allah still has dialogue with him. Iblis, what is it that prevented you from prostrating? Allah gives his own enemy the chance to explain himself. Think about that. Allah, the king of the universe, who's Iblis compared to God? Allah tells him, speak. Why did you refuse? He explains his position. I'm better than him. You created me from fire. He's from clay. I'm this, I'm that. He refuses and then he negotiates, keep me alive until the fixed day. He even negotiates with God and Allah still negotiates with him. My dear brothers and sisters, one element that's missing in our lives today is the element of dialogue, speaking with other people. When you speak with other people, you get to know their different perspectives a lot of harmony will happen in our lives, in our communities, in our societies. And by the way, when I talk about dialogue, don't think I mean the non-Muslims or that atheist. That's on the list too. I'm talking about our own people. Even us, the followers of Ahlul Bayt, the Shia, you think there's a lot of dialogue amongst us? Look at the divisions in many of our communities and societies. Sometimes we follow everything. You know, like the anecdote I shared with you in the beginning, right? Maybe some of you found it silly, but it's so realistic in our lives. Many times we believe in the same thing, the same Lord, the Quran, Islam, the 12 Imams, you know, the same Kaaba. We believe in Al-Imam Al-Mahdi. We believe in 99.999% of the beliefs. And then we have now suddenly a problem, for instance, around Marja'iyah. Which scholar do you follow? No, 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 I'm, I'm not okay with that scholar. And then I start dehumanizing that person and attacking this person and that person. And I don't even have dialogue with the other people. Okay, so what if another person follows a different scholar? Last time I checked our hadith sources, there was no hadith that says in the grave, you'll be asked, you'll be asked about the marja that you followed. Which marja was it? Yes, you'll be asked about the Prophet, Islam, the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, we have hadiths about that. Show me a hadith that says, you will be asked in your grave, what's the name of the marja that you followed? But we create such a huge issue. 
my dear brothers and sisters, a while ago, this brother wanted to propose to the family of a sister. So they had some questions, you know, they wanted to better know the brother. Everything was okay. All the items they had on their list, alhamdulillah, he fit them. Now because I knew personally the brother, so they asked me to ask them. They tried to get me involved somehow. So they told me, ask him, or if you know, which marja does he follow? This is three weeks ago. I told them, are you serious? They're like, no Sayyid, we're not, we're, we're, we're yes, we're dead serious. We want to know which marja does he follow. I'm like, why is that relevant? I'm telling you, he's practicing, he follows his laws, I know him. I've been to his house. He, he's very active. By the way, he's in a different country, not here. But I do know him. But why is that relevant? They're like, no, that we, we feel strongly about that. See, 20, 30 things on their list, he checked all of them. That last one, somehow they had an issue with it. The fact that they even asked that was very surprising to me. You see, how we create these obstacles. You have 99.999% in common. And then this last little thing here, we create an issue out of it. So having dialogue is extremely important in bringing harmony to our societies, my dear brothers and sisters. We need to talk to other people, even if they're different. Even if I think these people have got it wrong, go and talk to them. Simply visiting people, talking to them, helps a lot my dear brothers and sisters especially with peoples from other sects and faiths people from other religions how many times do we make the effort to go and talk to them a few years ago i was in halifax canada and i was speaking in the month of ramadan in a masjid over there across the street there was a church for years the muslims go to their masjid the christians go to that church nobody knows anyone no one makes contact. That year, they decided to visit one another. Look, we're neighbors. Let's get to know one another. That started a very beautiful initiative. A very beautiful effort for the Christians to come to the masjid to see our programs in the month of Ramadan. And we invited them for iftar. And then we took about 50, 60 Muslims and we went to the church. I can't describe to you the looks on those faces. The first time seeing Muslims enter the church and then they asked me to say a few words. When I spoke at that church, you could see their tears coming down. And then after when they came to greet us, they said, this is the first time, you guys are our neighbors all these years, this is the first time we actually see a Muslim and hear a Muslim talk. You know why there's so much Islamophobia in the country? It's because fellow Americans have not had the opportunity to actually know Muslims. According to research, those Americans who have anti-Muslim sentiments, they view Islam negatively, 74% of them don't have a single Muslim friend. They don't know any Muslims. So how do they know Muslims from Fox News, from the media? from other types of sources. And that means, my dear brothers and sisters, we're not doing enough. Let's get to know other people. Let's visit them. Simply by knowing you, you can break so many stereotypes. This brings a lot more harmony in our society. And then these, you know, that, that church became our best friend. You know, the pastor, he'd come on the night of Eid, we had a sahra, he came, he even prayed with us. That whole area just felt more peaceful. And other communities were inspired. Let's do the same. Let's get to know one another. We have so many shared values. Now, when I went to that church again, it was on a Christmas day, just like this, just like the Saturday. It was the 25th of December, maybe 2017 or 18. And I spoke to them about Lady Maryam السلام, and Prophet Isa السلام, from the Quran, you couldn't, I, I can't describe to you how shocked they were. They told me that your scriptures 
they have all these things to say about our Jesus? You're telling us that this story which you told us about the virgin birth is in the Quran? They don't know. 90% of them did not know. They had no clue that the Quran respects Jesus, that the Quran respects the Lady Mary. They had no clue. They were shocked. And I shared with them some hadiths about Prophet Jesus salam. They're like, your Muhammad spoke about our Jesus? He really had things to say about Jesus? See, that's what the media does. That's what lack of dialogue and interaction does. But once they get to know all of that, things change. So having dialogue, my dear brothers and sisters, is extremely important. Would anyone like to share with us an experience that they've had when it comes to dialogue, you know, something that um, you've personally experienced, which shows this, the importance of communication. And don't assume that people know. Most people don't know about you and your background. And we don't know about them and their backgrounds. So it's very important to make that contact and have that dialogue. Would anyone like to share any personal experience that they've had? Yes, brother. Uh, yes, you can, you can speak from there. Ahsan, thank you brother. By the way, you reminded me of an incident that happened um, another year in that same community in Canada. So we had these late night sessions where it's an open Q&A and anyone was welcome. So one night a Sunni brother comes. He's educated, he's a doctor. So he comes and he sits next to me because the brothers asked him, you know, to sit next to me. I could tell when he was sitting next to me, he was very nervous. Very nervous, but I didn't know why. I couldn't explain it. So I broke ice with him and we had a brotherly talk and he had a few questions, you know, some misconceptions. We cleared them up. At the end, I told him, brother, I have a question. I, you look comfortable now. When you came in the beginning, you seemed very nervous. May I know why? He's like, I'll be honest with you. I was very nervous. I was scared. I told him, why would you be scared? He's like, when I grew up, you know, in another country, I won't name that country. He said, I grew up in an environment that was very anti-Shia. My family raised me and they told me that the most dangerous people on earth are the Shia. Stay away from them. And the most dangerous of the Shia are those who wear the turban. And the most dangerous of those who wear the turban are those who wear the black one. 
<laughs> Allah's the witness. That's what he told me. So he's like, when I stepped in, I, I'm like, but yeah, we're living in Canada. Like, what, do you, what did you expect? He's like, I don't know. Because of that upbringing, I just felt nervous. Subhanallah. <laughs> so you can imagine, my dear brothers and sisters, when you don't know the other person, you know, what, what kind of society does it create for us? Subhanallah, he's such a decent person. We got to know him more. He's a very dear brother to us now. That initial interaction broke those barriers. He's never had a chance to actually sit with those people that his family had, you know, told him. And they had the same misconceptions that these are dangerous people. We need to have more of these opportunities. These opportunities are extremely important in bringing that our harmony to society. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So dialogue, my dear brothers and sisters, is key. It's very important to have dialogue. Even in our families. In some of our families, there's no communication. Some parents, their intentions are really good. They want the best for their children. But they're very stern. They're not willing to communicate. That's it. Let's close this file. I don't want to talk about this. No is a no. That doesn't work. Give your children the opportunity to explain themselves. Explain your position. Tell them why you think this is wrong or this is right. At, even if at the end you're going to say no, as a par responsible parent, sometimes you do have to say no. But at least you've shown them that you care about their perspective as well. That you've also given them the opportunity to explain themselves. They'll appreciate that over time. So we need that communication. We need that dialogue. That's the second step. To bring harmony in our societies and amongst the different religions and the different followers of the paths of Allah. The third recommendation, my dear brothers and sisters, is that don't ever assume something is true unless you yourself have investigated it. We live in an era of fake news. That's the reality. Whether it's social media, it's WhatsApp, a lot of false information is spreading. And many times, we really don't know the facts. You hear something about a group, about this person, about that family, about this institution, about this scholar, and we just assume that it's true. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us in the Holy Quran to investigate. In ja'akum fasiqum binaba'in fatabayyanu. You must investigate. Who's your source? Is that a credible source? Is that a pious person who you know never makes up anything? Can you really verify that? Many times we have these false ideas and impressions about different people, different groups, and we build our actions based on that. The religion of Islam teaches us to investigate. Anything you're not sure of, you have to investigate. Verify it yourself. That gives you a lot of clarity. That brings so much harmony in our societies. You'd be surprised how many misconceptions people have. How many misconceptions. There are a few people that in the last month only, people who had a problem with the religion of Islam, you know what one big, big problem was? Some of them were on the verge of leaving. You'd be surprised. I know you will all be shocked right now when I tell you. One factor amongst these people that I met was the position of Islam towards a dog. One brother told me, teenage brother, he told me I almost left Islam because Islam discriminates against dogs. You can't touch a dog, it's haram. And Islam hates animals. Can you imagine? And we live in what? In the 21st century, where information is accessible like no era in history. And yet, you have these people raised in Muslim families. A lot of them are practicing families. Yet, this is the understanding that this person has. This just shows you that we take so many things, so many assumptions as true facts, and we build on them. Another, another person a few years ago, this person had actually left the religion of Islam. Somehow his friend got him to talk to me. So I asked him, why have you left the religion of Islam? 
He said, because science has disproven religion. Science has shown that Islam is a false religion. I'm like, really, how? Can you share, me any, share with me an example? He's like, yeah. Islam tells us that humans started, you know, 5,000, 6,000 years ago. Whereas the fossils, the fossil record, science tells us, no, that goes back to millions of years. Two million years ago, three million years ago. So that shows us that Islam is not a true religion. I told him, who told you Islam said that the first human lived 6,000 years ago? <laughs> Did you read that in the Quran? In any hadith? Where is that? There's no such verse in the Quran. He was shocked. He's like, really? There isn't? I'm like, no. Show me. Where is that verse? Which verse says that? Which hadith says that? In fact, when you look at the Quran and the hadiths, they indicate there were many human-like figures before Adam Such that the Imam السلام, in one hadith, he says, before this Adam, there were 1,000 Adams. He's like, you're making that up. I'm like, here's the source. This book was compiled 1,200 years ago. He was shocked. He's like, I've never heard this. I didn't know this. You see how something so simple like that made this person even lose his faith. So many times, my dear brothers and sisters, we assume things. Never assume anything. That's very important to bring harmony. Understand where people are coming from. Simply by understanding where they're coming from, try to have empathy, understand their circumstances, you will see them completely differently. They say one day in the city of Isfahan, this father with his children, they got on the bus. When they got on the bus, oh, people are you know, going back from work, people are tired. His children started to cry and yell. They caused this commotion on the bus. So everybody got disturbed. Everyone's now on the edge, you know, should we say something? You know, control your kids, they're, they're you know, ruining the atmosphere in the bus. They're yelling, they're crying, they're screaming. A while after, they discovered that the mother of these children just passed away. And they came from the hospital. They're going back home. Everything suddenly changed on the bus. The kids were still screaming, but now no one was bothered by that anymore. In fact, everyone became so loving towards them. No one told them, be quiet, don't scream, you're bothering me. In fact, people wanted to help them somehow. Just do anything for them. What changed? It's the same bus, same people, same uh, frequencies, same voices. What is it that changed? They became understanding. They now know what the kids are going through. Because of that empathy and sympathy, everything changed. Many times, we don't know what other people are going through. What is the perspective of other people? Where are they coming from? So we judge them quickly and we misunderstand them. Verify everything, investigate everything, try to see where others are coming from. That's extremely important, my dear brothers and sisters, when it comes to creating harmony. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, sometimes, and this is a very important point, sometimes you'll say, but look, there are deviants out there. There are people with false beliefs, false ideas. How can I have harmony with them? Very briefly, before we start the Q&A session, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, has a very beautiful statement about the Khawarij. The Khawarij were extremists who caused a lot of corruption in Islam. They were deviants by all standards. The Imam السلام, was told before they started any war to go and fight them. The Imam refused during his caliphate. The Imam السلام, says two beautiful words about the Khawarij. The Imam says, In sakatu taraknahum. If they don't say anything, they don't spread their deviant ideas, let them be. Let's leave them alone. Taraknahum. Wa in takallamu. And if they speak, if they fall, if they spread false ideas, what do we do? Fight them? No. وَإِن تَكَلَّمُوا حَجَجْنَاهُمْ If they speak, we bring the hujjah. We'll respond to their arguments. We'll show the truth. We have arguments too. We'll show those proofs. That's the path of Amir al-Mu'mineen salam. That's how you bring harmony. And then finally, my dear brothers and sisters, whenever 
you're in a difficult situation, you're misunderstanding other people, other people have differences of opinion and that's overwhelming you, use the tool that Allah gave to Prophet Musa salam. Prophet Musa was going to the biggest tyrant of his time. Fir'aun, ana rabbukum al-a'la. He claimed to be the Lord. Imagine you have to speak to somebody like that. That's very tough. What tool does Allah give Prophet Musa? Qala rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri. Oh Allah, open my heart, open my chest, expand my chest. I am going on a tough mission. This man is very arrogant. No one can talk to him. So he didn't ask for a sword to go and kill the Pharaoh. He said, oh Allah, open my heart. Many times we just need to make this prayer. With people that you differ with, just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open your heart. This prayer brings a lot of harmony and it does a lot of wonders. Thank you so much. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad.